What's up, everybody? Jim with Reverb.com. We are at Royer Labs at AES in NYC. It's my buddy John. What's happening? Good to Good see to, you, man. Thanks. Thanks for coming by. We came out in 2002 with the world's first phantom-powered ribbon microphone, and that was called the 122. So it's like a 121, but 14 dB hotter. So you could take an acoustic guitar or a quiet vocal or a very quiet piece of percussion or piano or something and not have to have a super hot mic for you to record it. So a lot of extra level. The only problem that Mike had was that if you stomped it the way you stomp a 121, if you put it right up on a guitar cab, yeah. uh, if you were in a lower input impedance mic pre, like an older Neve or something, you would run the head amp out of headroom and you'd get a little microphone distortion, just on the heavy stuff. So that was the problem because we wanted to be able to use this mic for everything. What we've done is we've come up with the new 122 Mark II and this microphone has two switches on the back. They're recessed, so you can't set them off by accident. Yeah. But one of them is a 15 dB pad. It actually brings this microphone sensitivity down to 2 dB below the 121s. And then it has a bass cut. So if you're recording an acoustic guitar or something that you want to roll some bass out of, a uh, little proximity effect. You know, ribbons get thick on the bass as you get close to an instrument. That's called proximity effect. Yeah, yeah. So you basically dial the proximity effect out with this switch. It starts at about 100 hertz at 6 dB per octave. It sounds very natural and smooth. But that mean, what this allows is no matter what mic pre you're in, uh, if you want to record really heavy guitar, you can uh, put the pad on. The mic has plenty of headroom. Wow. And if you want to take some of the bass out, a little bit of that thicker proximity effect, you just hit that switch and, and roll that yeah, out. And leave it open if you want to do a little bit of a distance on the guitar cap or Absolutely, whatever. yeah. There are a lot of people use them for you know, a pair of these uh, uh, on overheads and they're really That's nice. Beautiful. Get a very natural you know, a representation of the snare and the toms and your cymbals sound really good, but uh, so natural that if you want a little more action from, for rock and roll, just open up your highs. Open up like 8K or 10K and you get a little bit more punch out of the cymbals, but it doesn't change the rest of the kit. You still get a lot of meat there. Well, John, thanks so much for talking us through this, hey, Mike. Man, my pleasure. Uh, Absolutely. I can't wait to grab one. Uh, have a good rest of your show, man. Thanks. Take care.